First of all, I'd like to thank you for purchasing our templates. I think they're very high quality and you can get a lot of use out of them. First thing I'd suggest to you is when you um, download the zip file that contains all of uh, the things that you purchased, that you put that in a safe place or when you unzip it, duplicate this folder that'll appear every time you need to use the templates because uh, you don't want to save any changes over um, these master files. You want to keep these masters intact. So you can always go back to them if you uh, happen to mess up an action or do something to a layer that you shouldn't have done, which happens from time to time. Um, you'll always have something to fall back on. So that's that's my first little little tip. But as soon as you unzip the zip file, you'll see um, a folder that contains should have the collection name that you purchased has an instruction file that's a PDF file and has two folders one that contains the cards that you purchased the templates that you purchased and um, the other that contains an action set that we provide that helps you to load the images your images into the templates in the right place and get them set up properly so it's a real easy to action it it prompts you it gives you instructions as you go along so you really can't go wrong as soon as you learn how to use it uh, which is very simple you can turn the prompts off and just rock and roll on your own but let's um let's take a look at the cards first a couple of the templates let's work with the save the date card it's a two-sided card a front and a back and if you click on that folder you'll see the two sides here the front and the back if I select these and double click them because I have Photoshop set up as my default editing application for tip tip files uh, it'll open them right away in Photoshop which is great and you'll see that we've got the front right here and the back right here. A couple of things you'll see that are in common other than the look of the templates are these little icons up here. These are notes. If you ever forget what you need to do with these things, all you have to do is come over to one of these icons and click it so it changes to a pencil and a line and come over to the notes palette and you'll see all the instructions for the template. So you always have a place to go if you um, are struggling and get lost. But this is very simple. Once you see it done once, I think you'll you'll get the hang of it. So let's let's go ahead and try. I'm going to close that and let's just open up this image without any distractions in the back. All right. So here is our front of the save the date card. Now, if we come over to the layers palette. Let me break it out so you see it here. You'll notice that there are color coded layers here, or actually groups. And anything that's color coded green, if it's a group, it means that there are layers or a layer within that group that you can edit. So if I click this to drop down and see what it is, ah, that's the text. To edit that, all I have to do is double click it, type what I want to do. Uh, type my change in if I don't mess up well you know maybe they don't want you to come um, and make sure you don't they you don't come they save you a don't save the day card I don't know but anyway we select our changes there <clears throat> and then we come down and we know we have to change out the image and you'll look at the image group is green so let me collapse the text group back and just open the image group and you'll see this group has red and green layers. Stay away from the red layers. Don't do anything there. All you want to do is change out our image, the image that comes with the template, to your image. And this is where that action comes in. It's very, very simple. All you have to do is go to your action palette and open the menu go down to load actions and navigate to that folder that contains the action set that we provided in your download. Select that, click open, and you see it loads them right there. And what it has in it are three actions for this template set. 
Um, one here is just for the 5 by 5s It'll load images on the front and the back side. You don't have to use a separate action for, for that. You can use the same one for the front and the back. On the other templates that are in your in your collection, um, you have a five by seven and a four by five and a half card, and they have different numbers of images on the front and the back. There's one on the front, two on the back. So we have two different actions, but these actions you can use for both the five by seven front and the four by five and a half front, or the five by seven back and the four by five and a half back. Does that make sense? Hope so. Anyway, we're dealing with the 5x5 five five. now don't save the date card. Um, so we just select that action if we want to run it. I could do that from the action palette and press play, but what I like is that I have the Kubota dashboard. So that, and I have the Dashboard 3 Pro version, which means that anything that's in my action palette, whether it's a Kubota action, action set, or an action that I've created, an action set that I've created, or actions that I bought from another place, they're all here. And they're much easier to work from in Dashboard. So I prefer to do that. So I just click it, and you'll notice that it's got my templates loaded right there. Here they are. There's that 5x5 five five front and back template and all I have to do here is click apply instead of play and the action is going to do the work for me and it's going to talk me through it so it says you know you have to have the uh, template file open um, be sure to save it with a unique name so you maintain the master file as I mentioned before and then it'll take you to the first step it says navigate to the file you want to insert so that's the image file you want to insert press place to insert it then, on, if you're on a Mac, press return, or on a PC, press enter when you see a transformation uh, of that image apply, and just it, it'll take you to the next step after that. So what does that look like? Let's try it out. All right, so I know this is the color version of the image that's in there. So I'm just going to highlight that. You know, see it's a PSD file. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And I click place as the instruction told me to. And then when I get to this transform, I need to press return on a Mac, enter on a PC, and it clips that image to the layer below so it's not outside of the frame that I've set up here. And it tells you what to do next. And the last step, you can control the placement of your image and the size of your image within that frame using free transform. And you hold down the shift key to transform the image in a proportional manner whether you're making it bigger or smaller and when you're done press return on a Mac or enter on a PC very simple so I can um, resize this hold down the shift key drag up drag down and I'm gonna bring them in a little more and I can move this around um, so they're where I want them to be I press return on a Mac enter on a PC and it's done. That's how easy it is. I mean, it, if, if you do that without stopping and reading and without all my verbal instruction, it takes literally seconds to swap it out. And let me tell you a couple of things, because sometimes you're going to run into a mistake. Oh, my goodness. And it's, it's very, well, it's, it's absolutely critical that your image layer is clipped to the layer we provide below because that layer acts as a clipping mask for your image and keeps it from extending beyond the borders of your frame. So if it looks like it's fine, it is fine and you'll see this little indication right here that means that your file is clipped to the layer below and all is well. Well what happens if it looks like this? Oh. This is where you have trouble. Um, if you see your image looking like this and you're supposed to be finished adding it, what that means is your image file is not clipped to the layer below. So this layer is not acting as a layer mask for your image is another way of put, putting that. The way you can change that, there are two different ways. This way I like because it's simple. On a Mac, hold down the Option key, Alt on a PC, and hover between the lines uh, of, of these two layers, of your clipping mask layer and your image layer, and you'll see something. See that? Your cursor changes from a hand to overlapping circles. When you see the overlapping circles, click. Just left click, and you'll see that it turns, 
it turns it back to the way it's supposed to be with a clipping mask indicator and your image all contained within the bounds of the frame. Okay, so let's take that back and I'll show you the other way to fix it. You can also come up to the, if you're a menu kind of person, come up to the layer menu, come down to create clipping mask and apply that and it does the same thing. If for some reason you wanted to disconnect the, it from the clipping mask, you can also release it by going to layer, release clipping mask. But, um, you know, I think most people will find that it looks much better this way. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. And um, you have a smart object you're working with here, which there are benefits to that. Um, you can actually double click here, change the master file that was brought in, that was placed in this template file. And when you save the changes you make to that, it'll update the image that you see here and put it right back in the same spot. So that's kind of cool. But, you know, it might be the way you want it from the get-go. I don't know. But anyway, that's how you do it, and it's very simple. Enjoy. And if you have any questions about using our templates or other products and services, please enter a support ticket at support.silverbackimaging.com. Have a great workflow-free day.